hopefully now at this stage are fairly comfortable with the digestive system. And in this video, I'm just going to do a quick recap of the digestive system, but also show you how it's linked to another system, which we're going to move on to next called the circulatory system. So hopefully we all know at this stage that digestion is the breaking down of food or the breaking, the breakdown of food. So why do we need to break down that food or, or what, what's the purpose of breaking it all down? Well, if on a Friday evening or whatever you get your, your spice bag and your spice bag, as we all know, contains all the nutrients that you need to survive. It has vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, glucose, everything you need. You eat the spice bag and the first place that the chips or whatever go is into your mouth. And straight away your teeth start to crush them up. Crush them up and break them down into smaller pieces. Now this is known as physical digestion where the food is actually physically being broken down into smaller pieces by your teeth and your tongue and later on by the churning actions of your, your stomach muscles because your stomach is kind of like a, a big, I suppose, cement mixer where everything is being squashed and turned and, and moved around. And this helps to break it all up into smaller pieces. But also in your mouth, um, saliva is released and sal saliva contains enzymes. And these enzymes are also starting to break down the food by chemical digestion. And this is at a much kind of smaller level, a kind of molecular level, where you have kind of large molecules, like let's say, I don't know, a large uh, carbohydrate molecule that is broken down by enzymes into smaller molecules. So much, much smaller molecules. So these things start happening straight away in your mouth. The food then is sent down through your esophagus into your stomach where more enzymes are added to help break it up. And there's also acid in there. And what the acid does is it helps uh, kill any bacteria. So what we have is we have um, basically safer food. So we're not kind of letting bacteria into our system that shouldn't be getting in there. And then after the stomach, the food enters the small intestine. Now the small intestine, as you can see here, it's, all, it's like a rope all bundled up in a pile. But if we straightened it out, it would look a little bit like this. Now what you notice as well is it's not just straight walls on either side. There's these kind of little fingers kind of sticking out and they're known as villi. <clears throat> and the reason they're there is to increase the surface area of the wall. And what I mean by that is if you imagine you had a rope kind of tangled up like this and then you grabbed that rope at either end and you stretched it, well, the stretched out rope would be much bigger, much longer than the, the tangled up rope. So what that does is it gives you a much, much larger wall. And it's through this wall that all the broken down food, the broken down glucose and carbohydrates and so on, start to move through your intestine, but are absorbed through this wall. So they get absorbed in through the villi, in through the walls of the small intestine. And that's why it's good to have a larger surface area because it's basically more wall for all the food to be absorbed through. So you can absorb food quicker, I suppose. So this is where the link starts to form. So that's basically the digestive system. Now there's lots more bits. There's the large intestine then where water is taken out of the bloodstream and water is, or water is taken out of the uh, food and enters the bloodstream. And also there's the pancreas and the liver which have different functions, which you've learned about over the last few days. But now we're going to see where the link is to the circulatory system. So behind these villi, what we have is we have blood vessels. And what I mean by blood vessels is little chambers that carry blood. And these blood vessels in particular are called capillaries, the really, really small ones. So when the food, the glucose or the carbohydrates or the vitamins or minerals breaks through the walls of the villi, it enters our bloodstream and the blood is flowing so it carries that those nutrients away. So here's a kind of better picture of it. We have our villi, uh, this is in the wall of the small intestine and then we have our glucose particle and it's absorbed through the wall of the villi and then it goes into the bloodstream and it's carried away. So why is it carried away? Well it's carried away and all around your body, all the way through your body, there are blood vessels. And the different types of blood vessels are veins, capillaries, 
arteries. And all this blood is being pumped, of course, then by the heart. And all of these things make up what's known as the circulatory system, where all those nutrients, among other things which we'll talk about as well, are carried around the body. So all that food is carried around the body. Now, why is it carried around the body? Well, our body, we know, is made up of millions and millions of cells. And each one of those cells is like a little small living thing by itself almost. Now, they can't survive by themselves, these cells, but they're like that. And in each cell, a chemical process happens. And that chemical process is something called respiration. And respiration is basically where we make energy from food. So what happens is the blood set or the blood vessels carry that glucose and all the other things all around the body and they deliver them to the cells. So the glucose is put into the cells or given to the cells. And then that glucose, I'll write glucose here, along with oxygen, which is also carried around in your bloodstream, are used by the cells in this chemical process known as respiration, which gives us energy. And the equation for respiration we may have come across before is basically where our cells take in glucose and oxygen, and they use that glucose and oxygen to give us energy. But there's also some waste material as well. Some other stuff is produced as well. So carbon dioxide is produced, or CO2, and also water is produced. So the blood, the circulatory system, carries the glucose and the oxygen to our cells. That, this process called respiration happens, and then carbon dioxide is given off, and water is given off. These are the waste products, but also energy is made. And that energy we use to walk around and live and grow and rebuild cells, all of those things. So that's how the digestive system is linked to the circulatory system. And in the next video, I'm going to go into the circulatory system in a little bit more detail and tell you about uh, what's the difference between veins and capillaries and arteries. And also, what are the different things that, uh, that make up our blood or what are the different parts that make up our blood?